right on time. I barely made it. <laughs> I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot, and it is Monday, February 27th. Now, we're going to do the same thing in this show as we do in all of our shows. We're going to focus in on hot OTC and penny stocks. At least I hope they're hot. I am doing my due diligence every day looking for stocks to share with you. And I am primarily doing my due diligence looking at the charts first. I'm looking for hot charts, charts that look like they're ready to break out. Then I go looking for news to back it up. Well, I got to tell you, it's not as easy as it may sound. During the weekends, it's great because my scan list is locked. It isn't moving. But through the trading day, everything is moving. And I'm on the list just trying to go down to the next chart. And they're bouncing around. And I keep seeing the same chart over and over again. But I do manage to get it accomplished. And I did it for you today, too. Now, we are going to be looking at both OTC and penny stocks. I know they sound the same, but they're different. An OTC stock is, well, on the OTC market. A penny stock is on every market because a penny stock is nothing more than any stock under five bucks, and they are everywhere. Now, when I'm doing research on stocks, this is my go-to site. You hear me say it all the time because it's updated every single day by FINRA and the SEC. What more are you looking for? And if you're running around the internet looking for it, you're not getting all current information. That's all this site has. So quit wasting your time running around the internet. Start here. You can always go over there if you can't find what you're looking for. So let's take a look at how our OTC market finished the last week of February. We're going to go ahead and refresh this and hope for something. Oh my God, thank God. Did you see that? It was under one billion. That was scary. All right, dollar volume is still low, 1.3 billion. You hear me say it all the time, we need to be up at 2 billion to get this thing moving. Share volume, same story. We need to be up at 10 billion shares. We haven't seen that in a long time. We're just bouncing around the five area, under it, over it. Trades, oh bloody heck. We cannot get over 250,000 trades. I think virtually the whole month we have been under 250,000 trades, which is the next level down. We were stuck between 250 and 300 for six months. We're not there anymore. Things are getting worse and not better. I hate to be the one to say it, but that is the fact. All right. Let me share with you the stocks I found today. They are a curious bunch to say the least. First stock we're going to take a look at is on the major exchange. This is a penny stock on the NASDAQ. This is NTWK, Netsoul Technologies. Now, of course, I found this by looking at the charts first, but I'm going to be completely honest. This is not what you would call a breakout chart, not by any means. Probably one of the least nice looking charts we've looked at. What it does have going for it is it looks like it is bouncing off of the floor. It is right above a 52 week low and starting to climb back up. It looks like it's on the floor, looks like it's got a lot of work to do, but it's got a lot of things going on for it right now. So I think it's worth considering. So NTWK, she finished a day just a little over $2.75 and just a little over 1.5% gains. So what does NTWK do? Well, looking at one of their press releases, they tell us here that NetSol Technologies is a worldwide provider of IT and enterprise software solutions, primarily serving the global leasing and finance industry. They're working with software. That's always a plus because there's not a lot of overhead with software. You give people license rights, you give them the program. You don't have to package anything, produce anything. You're just duplicating it really cheap. The company's suite of applications is backed by 40 years of domain expertise and supported by a committed team in eight strategically located support and delivery centers throughout the world. So they're not little. They've got a lot going on for them, and they've been around for a while. So what was the relative volume around this company today? Let's see what we got going here. Well, she's definitely under the radar, but she's not moving much. She dropped a little bit from about 13,000 shares a day to about 11.5 thousand shares today. Just a little bit of a drop, but still definitely under the radar. Share structure for NTWK. Well, it's going to be a low float. We know that much. Our outstanding share count is 11.2 million. And I did look this up. Looks like I found some agreeing numbers here. 
Yeah, look at this, 9.18, 9.17, 9.45. So looks like we've got just about 9 million shares in a float, which is a terrifically low float. That is juicy. Financials for the company. Well, that's not looking too bad. They're doing roughly 60 million every year for the last four years. We know it's millions because we got to add three zeros behind any of the numbers down here. Let's take a look at our quarterly, see what we got for 2022. Doing roughly 12 to 13 million every three months. So they are making money steady and regularly. Balance sheet, just so we have an idea here of their total assets, 64.8 million and their liabilities are only about one-third that at 24.5 not looking bad disclosures all right what do we got here we've got an 8k this came out just to announce that they had put out their financials right there then we've got three sc 13 g's that's great this is beneficiary ownership in simple terms new big investors they buy so many shares they actually become part owners they get a percentage of the business they get voting rights to steer the company now and then you've got a whole bunch of form fours here this is when insiders receive or let go of shares they could buy them they could get them as a reward and incentive stuff like that well some of these are rewards and stuff like that but two of them are purchases from the ceo himself he has bought shares of the stock so he is buying right now at the end of December. Here we are going into March. And the news. What do we have for news with this company? All right, I have gone back just to the beginning of the year here. Now, we're not going to jump into these, but they are making deals steadily and regularly as well. This one is at the beginning of January. They signed a teaming agreement with DICES. Didn't jump into it, but it is a deal that they have just made. And then in February, right at the beginning of the month, they made another deal. They extend their partnership with Amazon Web Service and become API Gateway Delivery Partner. Now, I don't know what that's worth. I don't know what's involved with it, but the news is there if you're interested. And then the most recent piece of news we had actually came out mm, roughly two weeks ago. Let's jump into this. This came out February 16th. Netsol signs multi-million dollar agreement with leading Japanese equipment finance company in Australia. An American company dealing with a Japanese company working out of Australia. This is all international, ain't it? Netsol's Technologies, a global business service and enterprise application solutions provider, has signed an agreement with the finance division of a leading global agricultural and industrial equipment manufacturer based in Japan. The contract relates to its operations in Australia. The multi-million dollar contract is for the deployment of Netsol's premier technology platform, NFS Ascent Retail. We're excited to formally announce this agreement with a major Japanese equipment finance provider to deploy NFS Ascent for the use in their operations throughout Australia. And that's really all there is. There's no money mentioned here. There's no start date, closing date, nothing like that. What we've got is constant news. They're con it's like every 30 days they make another deal. So that's nice. They're making money on a regular basis and I'm sure all of this new business is gonna help that. They have just had new investors. Each one of those 13 Gs could have multiple investors. They just don't have to have one. You need to jump in and see how much is there. So they got a lot of little things here going for them. All of it looks good. I wish I could say the same about the chart. But as I said, it does look to me to have a setup of recovery. Let me show you what I'm talking about. As we always do, we're gonna be doing our charting on my free trading platform, Think or Swim. I got this when I signed up with TD Ameritrade. You can too. So we are looking at a four hour, six month chart for NTWK. We got a high bubble here of $3.80 in September. Hit a low here of $2.64 at the beginning of January. Bounced off that low bubble hit a high here of $3.49 and then catapulted right down here. Now she is close, but not to the low bubble. And she's already bouncing before she even got that low, which I take as a good sign. Volume isn't very strong here at all. Technicals, well, they're not that bad actually. Let me zoom in on this. 
We've got our PPL turning up now, looking like it's about ready to climb. And the price will climb when this is climbing. And you know it's climbing if your ADX is going down while this is climbing, guaranteed 100% your trend is climbing. So these two look pretty good. My PPO, my percentage price oscillator, and my ADX, my trend continuation. The MACD, it's a lot like the PPO. You read it the same. We just had a crossover on that, and she is climbing, though she's deep under her uh, signal line here. She does have some green bars now accumulating. And our RSI has been growing, but it is tempted right down here at 43 Let's take a look at our 20-day, one-hour view. So she hit that high of $3.50 here. She was firmly and secure above the 200. She came down and lost her footing, slipped underneath the 50 here and tumbled all the way down to that low. And right now she's just pushed off of it and is just sitting on her 20 right up underneath that 50-day SMA. She got any strength? No, really. Technicals are pretty plain. They're just leveled out like calm water right now. Five day, five minute. Well, she's just basically going sideways, isn't she? I mean, you could pretty much just draw a line right in this area. You can see she's just sticking in there. She did poke her head up today. Got up to $2.87, pulled back, landed smack dab in the middle of this area on top of the 50, which you can see is now pretty much flat. It's going flat. It's getting her... Uh, place to put her feet so she can jump. She's on top of her 20. The charts don't look bad. They're weak, but they don't look bad. Our technicals, they're a little weak. Now, this could drop some more, but I don't think it would come below the 52-week low bubble. I don't think it would. And that's down here at 268, and we're at 275. I'm thinking this is probably going to start pushing up. It may have a struggle with that 200, which is at $3.16 right now. It may have a problem with that, but between here and there, you could get yourself some good gains. And if a piece of news comes out and she's got some strength and breaks out over that 200, we could see a real strong run with this stock. But remember, I didn't cover everything. There's more to know. Do your due diligence. This next stock we're looking at has got a beautiful chart, one of the nicest charts we've looked at. She hasn't got any filings right now, but she's got a lot of news presses. This is XTRAF, Extract One Technologies. Finished the day just a smidge over 53 cents and just a wee bit over 6% gains. Now, XTRAF is not just on the best tier of the OTC, the QX. They're in the top 50 of all the stocks listed on the QX. Now, I don't know how many that is, but it really doesn't matter. Being in the top 50 is a big achievement. Being on the QX means you have to audit your financials and you got to give us all the information you have on your company. It is the most trustworthy, most transparent tier on the OTC market. And they've got all the green ticks that we'd be looking for on any other stock. A verified profile, a transfer agent. You want to see these. The longer you're in a stock, the more important they are. Independent directors. Well, I knew they'd have those because you need them if you're going to uplist to the QX, which I'm presuming they did. But they're still there. And if they want to uplist to the NASDAQ or the New York Stock Exchange, you've got to have independent directors. And there's not a lot of reasons to have them except for that. And there they sit. So who knows? So what does XTRAF do? Well, I can tell you now they're changing their name and ticker. I don't know when, but they're not called XTRAF anymore. They're called Patriot One. Patriot One's mission is to deliver innovative threat detection and counterterrorism solutions for safer communities. Our PATSCAN multi-sensor covert threat detection platform provides a network of advanced sensor technologies with powerful next generation AI machine learning software. The network can be covertly deployed from a far perimeter to interiors. The PATSCAN platform identifies and reports threats wherever required, car park, building approach, employee and public entryways, and inside the facilities. To give you a better idea of what we're talking about, they give us some pictures here, pictures worth a thousand words. This is one of their non-obtrusive scanners. When you don't want people to know they're being scanned or it just doesn't fit the decor, you can have something pretty like that. Or when you want people to know you mean business, we're watching you, you can put up the ones that grab everybody's attention. And then of course, 
They've got a software program that ties everything in together. They have cameras out there, they have scanners, and this brings all that information together under that AI machine learning program. So that's what they do, that's what they got. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Well, they normally do 117,000. Today they virtually doubled that. Somebody's paying attention to this company, up to 224,000 today. Share structure for the company. All right, I did go look this one up. We got 163 million outstanding. They give us a few different numbers here. What I found doesn't match any of these numbers. I found 129 million in the float. Could be different, but that's what I found on Google. Financials for XDRAF. Well, all right, she had money come in in 2021 of $866,000. We've got nothing here for 2022. Quarterly, that's still missing. That's that exact same one, 731, 731. Why it's missing, I don't know. October of 2022, they did about a half a million dollars worth of business. Not making a lot of money right now, not really. But as much news as I see, as much business as they seem to be doing, I think they're going to explode. Now that's just a feeling. I don't know how many competitor companies are out there that do this. I'm sure there are more and some due diligence will reveal that fact. Let's take a look at her balance sheet. That'll give us a little bit of insight. Total assets here, 10 million. Total liabilities, ooh, not bad, just under three million. So they got three times as much assets as they do liabilities. Looking at her disclosures, what do we got going on over here? We got nothing, nothing here to see whatsoever. So let's take a look at that news. They got lots of news here and I've scanned back a little ways. I'm back to May of last year. What I'm basically showing you here are deals they have been making all this time. Each one of these is a different deal. They sold some of their products to the Oakview Group, to protecting the first responders and firefighters, a large auto manufacturer, the SAP Center at San Jose, uh, OVG 360's Angel of the Winds Arena, Lake School District. And then we got a couple pieces of news here. Patriot One receives conditional approval for name change to Extract One Technologies. Oops, I had that backwards, didn't I? All right, so that's their new name, Extract One Technologies. We all make mistakes. I'm not AI, but I am human learning. Uh, then what do we got here? Name change for the Patriot One Technology, a deal here with Hyundai, Another deal with the casino. So you see, they're making deals all the time. This is a product that lots of people are gonna wanna make use of. Then you got a news press that they just made the top best 50 on the QX. And then we've got a piece of news that came out on the 13th. So we're not gonna read too much about this because what I've got highlighted is pretty much what you need to know. Extract One Technologies announces strategic investment. Extract One Technology today announced that MSG Sports will invest up to 13 million Canadian dollars. That's equivalent to 10 million American dollars. That is Madison Square Garden Sports Corporation, ticker MSGS. That's the company investing $10 million into this company. And the initial investment is of $6.3 million. And that is to help them expand their business, to help them grow whatever it is that they need. So they've got money. They got business coming in. They are making revenues. They've got some great products. I expect this thing to grow and the chart is growing already. Let's go take a look at that. Let's hone on in on XDRAF. This is a six month, four hour chart as usual. We got a low bubble here back at the end of December of 35 cents and today we had a high of 54 cents. She hit that low bubble and she started to push off of that very slowly, getting some nice runs in here and now she's starting to pick up momentum and she's really starting to move fast. You can see all the volume is picking up and getting very strong. And is there any doubt about our technicals? Every single technical is on fire and pushing up, except for the ADX, which is doing what we want it to. It's going down while our PPO is going up. We got that wedge right there. It looks beautiful. Everything is hot on the four hour chart. 20 day, one hour. 
Boy, that's beautiful. She was down here on her 200-day SMA, dipped under it, hit a low bubble. That was it. Jumped back up under a 200 and launched herself. Started meandering around the 50-day SMA, bounced off it one last time here, and has started to launch herself. And she's doing very well. We have got higher lows all the way across the board here, except here in the aftermarket hours. That is nice growth. Technicals are still looking supreme. We've got that spread on our PPO and our ADX. We've got a nice strong climb on our MACD and our RSI is still on fire up in the overbought at 72. Five day, five minute. You know it's not gonna look bad. <laughs> so she had this dark stab underneath the 200 jumped there, came right back up, jumped onto her nine day, rushed right over the 50 day SMA and just kept climbing. Fell back to the 50, started pushing off of it again and now is bouncing off of the 20 day SMA. This is looking beautiful. She hit a high bubble, she's had a pullback. That's not a fall, that's a pullback. You see this over and over again, whenever a high, but not whenever, but in most cases. When a high bubble comes, everything just calms down a little bit and then it proceeds. And that's probably what's gonna happen here. All of the uh, SMAs are wonderful. Our technicals do have a little bit of cooling off right now. They are showing this at the very end of the day after she climbed the whole day. She's had drops, but she is sticking on her SMAs perfectly. This really looks good to me, folks. I know she's been climbing, and I really don't like to second guess stocks if they're gonna continue to climb. Lots of people like to call that a falling knife. Now this isn't running real fast, so we've got a chance to work with it, but as you can see, she has got some steady growth right now, looking strong. The financials are looking good, but they need some growth. And I'm hoping that the money they just got is gonna help them expand so that the revenues can grow and their business can get bigger. XTRAF. I like it, even though it looks like it's already run, I think it's got more to give. This last stock we're taking a look at is a very interesting choice for me. Now I did pick it because it has a nice chart. It wasn't doing hardly anything up until February 1st, then it took a jump. And since February 1st, it has been climbing virtually the whole month. So I came over here, fingers crossed, hoping to find some lingering news that came out February 1st. And I wasn't disappointed. Not only did I find a news press, but I found a filing as well. Both were about the same thing, and it was good news in the investor's benefit. But I didn't think it was good enough to keep the stock running the whole month. So I started doing some more research, and what I discovered, not much, what I discovered is that this company does not communicate with the investors, ever. They put out one news press and one file in a year, and that's it, their annual financials, nothing more. Well, this is not a financial. It's unique, it's different, and I think it got the investors excited. But is that enough to keep the stock running the whole month? I don't know. This is TXHG, TX Holdings. She finished today just a little over three cents and just a little over six and a half percent gains. Now she is on the pink limited tier. This isn't a good thing. Uh, to be on pink limited, you have to be behind on one or more of your financial filings. And you gotta get these remedied in a certain amount of time or they will yank you off of the OTC market and throw you down to that expert market. It is a punishment. It is a timeout. Your shares cannot be bought or sold while you're down there. And you'll stay down there until you get your financial filings caught up. And if you're invested in them, you're in limbo too. You're stuck down there until they come out. Now, when these companies do get yanked off the market, they get a 15 day countdown. You'll see the words grace period right here. They're being yellow, but they won't tell you when that date is right here, but you can find it. Come over here to quote and then scroll down to proprietary quote eligibility and it'll be right there. It'll say grace period and the very last date that this stock's gonna be on the OTC. So if you do see grace period, you may wanna consider passing up that stock until you see if it's still on the market after the grace period. They do have a verified profile, but we don't see a verified transfer agent and that is important. 
They don't give us a huge description here, but basically they sell parts to railroad and mining companies. Metal parts, big heavy metal pieces. That's the sort of stuff they sell. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Try again, see what we got here. What? Oh my God, what a drop. I am surprised. 337,000 shares is what she does daily on an average. Today she did 29,000 shares. That is a humongous drop in volume. And I don't know why. Is this the end of the run or has something happened? Or is it simply under the radar? I really don't know. Share structure for TXHG. Their outstanding share count is at 48 million. The float they declare is 19.5 million. I went to Google, looked this up, and that's close. Uh, I kept finding numbers this side and that side of 20 million. So it's roughly 20 million right now. Taking a look at her financials, I've already gone through this and there's a lot of information missing. This is 2020. She did $2.3 million then. And looking at her quarterly, we're just not getting anything recent here. So I jumped into their most recent financial. This is for September 30th, 2022, comparing it to the year before, September 30th, 2021. 2022, they did just about $4 million. In 2021, they did $3.5 million. So they are making revenues. They've got money coming in. Why it's not showing up over here, I really don't know. Disclosures. We got a couple of things we need to take a look at over here. First, right there is that 8K that came out February 1st. This is the same thing that we're going to look at in the news. So we're going to look at it there. And then all the rest of the filings here are quite old. So we don't have to look at any of those. What we need to concern ourselves with is how late are they on their financial filings? They're pink limited. Well, I can see right here, they tell us 930 was their last one, which means 1230 is the next one. And we're not even finished with the first quarter for 2023 yet. So they're only behind by one filing. That shouldn't be a big deal to get in there. All right. And they've only got one piece of news. That's all they really have. So let's jump into that. This came out February 1st, right? The board has authorized a common share repurchase program of up to 8 million shares of the company's common stock to be effective for a 12 month period at a maximum price of 25 cents per share. The repurchase program will commence on February 1st, 2023 and will run until January 31st, 2024. The repurchase of the stock will be handled through TD Ameritrade. Now look at the current price. We're at three cents roughly. And they say they will pay up to 25 cents per share buying these back over the next year. Well, they put in a limit, right? Why did they put in a limit? I mean, one could presume that they believe the stock could exceed 25 cents and they just don't want to spend that much. So maybe there's something going on there. Maybe it's about what they said. 25 cents is pushing us up. Wouldn't it be nice to see this stock rise? The other thing that you need to consider is that 8 million shares. It's coming off of our float, right? And our float is 20 million. So you're going to take 8 million off of that, not all at once. It'll just happen little by little by little. And you're going to end up with a small float. So every time they buy shares off of the common market, they are shrinking the float because they're buying them from us and then eliminating those shares. So every time they do that, our shares become worth more. And it's a pretty decent cut, 8 million from 20 million. I don't know what that is, like two fifths two-fifths, something like that. So that's what I see going on here, but I just don't know why she's still running after 30 days. Let's go take a look at that chart and see if we can figure it out. TXHG, six-month, four-hour chart. As I said, she was doing absolutely nothing. Then she had this humongous spike out of nowhere. That goes from just a little over a penny to a little over seven cents. That is a 700% jump on what? Nothing. They've got no news. They've got no filings. I guarantee you I looked. Nothing happened this day. So I can't explain that, but it is nice to see. Then it came all the way back down and went under the 50 day SMA and was going to stay there. It looks like until the news came out February 1st, we had a big jump. Then she fell back the next day, as you would expect, 
profit takers, but it landed on this fresh new 200 day SMA and bounced off of it immediately. Jumped on top of her nine day escalator and has been riding up ever since and is still looking really good. Volume is nothing to talk about, right? 29,000 shares, but our technicals aren't looking bad. They're a little mixed, but they're not looking bad. Our PPO is definitely climbing, still pushing up the right direction. We got a crossover on our MACD. She's been having a heck of a time here, but she is pushing up. Our RSI is at 60. I like to see it over 55, 60 is great. 20 day, one hour view. Well, there's your steady climb. She jumped here on February 1st. Yep, there's your jump. She was sitting on top of her 50 at that point. Got on top of her 20 day, it looks like. Yeah, it looks like she is hanging on to that 20 day right now. Forget the 50, she's pushed herself up onto a lighter SMA, which can float faster up. She has jumped back up onto her nine day SMA. Our technicals, our PPO is pushing up. Got that crossover on our MACD, that looks beautiful. And we are at 58 on our RSI. The only thing missing is the volume. Five day, five minute. Oh, we got a nice roll going here, don't we? Wow, she rolls from three and a half cents down to two and a half cents, back up on top of her 50, and now she's sitting there on top of the 50, on top of the nine, looking strong, looking strong. Our PPO is still pushing up right now. Our ADX shows that this trend is still continuing. It's a straight line. It's not all wiggly. Our MACD is at a crossover. Green bars accumulating and our RSI is climbing. This doesn't show a ton of power, but she does have what we need. A nice steady climb that is predictable almost. She's got some ups and downs. There is no doubt about that, but she respects her SMAs. And she has gotten on top of her 50 now. Looks like the 20 day is coming up underneath that nine day SMA. I like this. Not that I really see a huge catalyst, right? But she's doing what she's supposed to do. So TXHG could be a wild card play, could be something happening in the background, maybe something on Twitter. I don't know. Some more due diligence may clear that up for you. I know today's stocks weren't the usual type of stocks that we look at. I'm normally looking for those charts that are set up for a breakout over the 200 day SMA. Today we were looking at stocks that had more of a run already going on. They're a little trickier, but we've got to give them a try, especially if you can find news attached to them. And that's all I'm doing, folks. I'm looking for a chart that looks pretty decent and then finding news to match it, not the other way around. DD, play with it. It doesn't have to be hard. The more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.